and live, but I figured why not. So I'm going to give a quick lesson to everyone. So unfortunately, sorry to burst your bubble. This is not actually Tolat Shanim. It is what I would call pseudo Tolat Shanim, or in other words, it's actually a different species. So this is, ah, shoot, what's it called? So, dang it. Um, this is called, oh, I don't know how it's escaping me at this moment, but here, let's see if you can see it. All right. Hey, Anonymous. So th this stuff is called, oh, if someone can look it up for me, Anonymous, if you can look it up for me. So this stuff is, uh, was it, so it's Mexican. Oh, I don't know if you could just see that, but it just bled a little. So here, you, you can kind of see it. So it's, ah, dang it, I, I don't know how the word is escaping me right now. Um, so no, so this is, this is a cactus. So the, uh, well, technically they're insects that I'm harvesting from the cactus. So I'm actually, yeah, you can see a little bit of it. So, uh, shoot, in low power mode. So I don't know how long I'll be able to go live for like this. Uh, okay, yeah, you can see the blood. So this stuff is basically insect blood, but it's uh, tr truly, it is basically the consumed uh, cactus nectar or like cactus blood that's then um, used, well not used, oh shit, this just broke off. Dang it, I need to, I need to find something better to use. Um, okay, this will work, I can just use a rock. So, um, dang it, what's the word? Okay, it's really bugging me now. Um, it is, yeah, I'm just going to look it up. Hopefully it doesn't time me out. I really hope it doesn't. Let's see. What's that? I don't know how I forgot a little bit of the blood on my hand. It's, that's not actual blood, but here you can see. So, um, and then here I'm going to be using this. So, oh shit, one second, oh, oh, dang it, one second, my, my Ashura just kind of fell over, I just need to get it to a point where, okay, that's good, so, um, how are we going to do this, here, like this, and then we're just getting it in here into this water bottle, and then what we're going to do after is we're going to uh, probably throw some rocks in there, crush it up, get it to release its juices because a lot of it is just stuck in this fluff and it needs to be expressed. And then once we do that, we're going to um, make a, what is it, like a decoction of it. And then we are going to pour it off. And then we're going to dry it and what we'll have left is a red powder that can then be re-added to water in order to make a dye. And so this, although it is a different species, what we're dealing with are tiny little insects, not even true grubs. I mean, maybe you could call them grubs. I'm not, I'm not an expert on entomology, but I do know that these are much smaller than the Tolat Shanim were because those you could actually hold they in fact, if you didn't know what they were, you might eat them because they're little, uh, like they look like little, um, what's the word? Oh, wow, wow, you're really getting this. You can see it's so dark red that it's almost black. So this is stuff that actually is used by the natives, uh, by the indigenous people of the land and also by uh, later by the Mexican colonizers, or I guess technically the Spanish colonizers of Mexico. Um, and that's a, oh shoot, one, one of the, one of the, well, leaflets or whatever came out. Oh, wait. oh shoot, here. So, this one seems to be mostly free of spikes. So I'm, I'm probably just going to do this until my uh, bone dies, and then I'm going to go home and um, then at five my time, so seven Eastern, I'm going to go live with Neil. And then after, oh shoot, one second. I'm just sitting directly on a spot again this way. I'm just gonna poke away. 
So then I'm going live with Neil um, for about an hour or so uh, with Neil and Snappy. And then after that, um, we're going, me and Snappy will, I mean, I don't know how long Snappy's down for, but we'll move over to my channel because Neil is not um, down for the whole time, but honestly, I'm glad that we're doing it at all because originally he was thinking of maybe just not doing it today, pushing it towards Thursday, but at the end of the day, he figured it would be better to do a little bit today. Um, you know, I don't have to do the whole time. And then um, that he, he's being really generous in um, that. He, so moving it over to my channel, he's also helping to promote it. And I mean, it's nice because I'm, I'm starting to finally, you know, get up into where my videos are getting, at least live streams are getting, um, you know, 12 or more people. And this is not even when we're like, you know, at good times of the day or whatever. So, I mean, I'm really, I'm really glad and I'm really thankful and appreciative for what Neil's done for me and for a bunch of other creators like, uh, like Ammon and Snappy and uh, Jason Sobek and, uh, don't have everything off the top of my head, but, um, like seriously, this is really a master renaissance, and obviously a lot of, a lot of ideas are not necessarily going all the way back in time, just because of the inherent, you know, difficulty of doing historical research, but I do think that, if nothing else, it is a good revival of a lot of the things that previously had not even been talked about. Oh shoot, is this a, oof, we almost got a spine in here, got a, get this out. Oof. Yeah, imagine you get one of these in you. Wow, you see how wispy this is? So this stuff is basically like cobwebs almost. Here, uh, let's see. Have we got any comments? Uh, live chat, all chat? Okay, here, let's see. Uh, what do these insects do? Is there a specific reason why you're interested in them? Uh, let's see, etymology of the word tuna comes, yeah, so the, the, these are cacti tuna, cactus tunas. Um, etymology of the word tuna comes from the indigenous inhabitants of Quisquewa, Haiti, Hispaniola, Dominican Republic, Taino's word for cactus. Technically, we call the cactus pear fruit tuna. Yeah, I don't, you, you don't have any tunas here, but there are in some ones that are over in a different area. So, um, let's see. Spaniards named the fish tuna after the pins of the fruit and sweet red color. Oh, that's fascinating. I thought there was a connection or you know, I was wondering if there was a connection and it turns out there is, but it's actually the other way around. I thought maybe the fish had something to do with why they, oh, okay. So I'm at 10% now. We're not going to be on for much longer, but I do feel like I at least got kind of the core why I brought this up in the first place. Um, let's see. Um, Oh, and it, thanks, Anonymous. I mean, at the end of the day, I I am who I am, and I don't mean that in some weird esoteric way. I mean, I guess you could view it that way, but ba basically, I don't know. I've um I've just kind of learned to embrace the weirdness, and to you know, because at the end of the day, I've realized that the people who would judge me for you know being a bit out there and you know like being that person who people are walking by and they see that I'm scraping white shit that looks disgusting off of a cactus and they're probably like okay what the hell is that person doing and frankly I don't know I mean maybe before I'd be like huh I honestly I can't put myself back in time like that I don't know really you know how things change so to speak like how I would feel about doing something like this in the past, because I mean, given it's not like I'm doing anything that's that weird just by scraping. I mean, like I'm, I'm harvesting from a plant. That's, you know, just something that I guess maybe by our society standards is kind of out there because it's like, oh, just go, you know, y you need the red dye, buy it online. But it's like, well, why not make it? Because when you make something, when, when you're crafting something, you have a special connection to it. And, I don't know, like, at the end of the day, it's nice to be able to buy things that you need, but it's also nice to be able to make them, because then you feel a special connection to them. You don't just throw it away when it gets a little bit dirty. You you actually have this 
I don't know what you would call it because you could view it in an esoteric way. You could view it purely in a, an emotional way. And I think in some level, it actually shows how the two are very interconnected. And part of the reason why you have psychologists or, um, you know, um, therapists like Freud and like Jung talking about all this esoteric shit, it's not for no reason. I'd argue that the more interested people are in the mind, the more interested they are in religion and esotericism, because oftentimes people just think of religion within the most literal sense of like, oh, you know, doctrine. But for many people, and for prop arguably most of the people who are high up in any tradition, it's much deeper to them. I mean, oh, oof, just kind of stabbed myself a little. And I can't tell if it's blood. No, that's not blood. It's not that bad. Wait, what? As an esoterrorist? No, don't don't say that. You don't want to be labeled an esoterrorist. I mean, I'm sure there's a context to that. That's completely fine. But it's, last thing you want to do is be put on some water. Oh, oh, fuck! Ow. Okay, I'm going to be more careful now. I promise. Uh, just a little, just a little pin prick or uh, thorn prick. Okay. It's wild, though. I mean, like, if you think about it, we view these spines as pointy and scary, but to them, they're literally just towers. I mean, here, um, hopefully before my phone dies, I'm going to show you it all. So, look, look at this. Oh, oh, yeah, so, look at this. So, uh, I'm going to try to find a little bit of bugs here. Maybe you can see. Okay, see those little dots? Oh, actually, no, you can't really see it there. Maybe. Oh, my God. I just realized this, this is basically a massacre. Okay, here. Can I zoom in? Yeah, I can. So, let's see. Here, I found them. I think. So, they actually live inside of this shit. So, um. Huh. Okay, wait, here, I think I might have found them. Um, here. Yeah, you can see them. Oh, wow, you can really see them. So, they're more or less stationary. Um, and they, they live inside of it, so it's their little home, almost like a, like a web. Like, imagine a web, but it's a nest. And so they, they're, they're little stationary things. They just live there. They suck the blood sap or not or the sap from the cacti. And then the, when you squish them, they, they emit the blood. So it's kind of interesting because I wonder, like, is it, it might be part of the digestive process. This would be something to look into that I probably will. Um, say you were to take this tuna, cut it open. There's probably not going to be any red because they're alchemists. They're turning the regular nectar or the sap. Yeah, I mean, like, look, there's no red in here. This is, like, uh, part of where it broke off at the joint. Like, where's the red coming from? They're turning water into wine, just like Jesus. And he says, I am not a man. I am a worm. Um, like, and it's this word, tolat. So, and then look, I mean, given... It would, I'd really say there'd be a connection if um, if the way they got it were from cactus in there. But so the tolat actually grows on a tree, not on a um, not on a cactus. But right, other tiny words include tobacco, Y uh, shaped nasal pipe used for um, blowing yopo, a DMT containing hallucinogenic snuff, which also contains tobacco leaf. A little red bit for snappy. So interesting, interesting. So yeah. Um, you know, looking here, you can see these little bugs. Um, I wonder if those are the little carcasses or something. It's honestly kind of gross. I was grossed out by the stuff for the longest time. And then after working with it, now I don't have any issue with it being on my hands, even though it's basically bug blood. It's, uh, what's the word? Bug juice or, uh, what is it? Um, what is it they call this shit at camp? Um, Dang it, it's like my memory is not what it used to be. And I mean, I fully blame that on COVID. That's one thing I'll talk about a lot, but um, but yeah, so let's zoom back in. So you can see here, the, yeah, so I don't know. There's something to it though, because they're basically turning the water in the cactus 
into wine. I mean, it's not literal wit, you know, it's not literal wine. You're not, you're not going to get drunk if you drink it. Speaking of which, whoa, you can actually see it. Oh, here, let's see, I need to zoom back out. Okay, quickly before it go, here, look. The wine, who thinks I should drink this? I'm joking, I'm not going to drink it, so don't tell me to. I mean, you can, but I'm not going to. But yeah, so imagine, imagine you have a little bit of this stuff, you just, you throw it in water, you kind of squish it around, and all of a sudden you have water into wine. Freaking miracle there. And the interesting thing is like, I don't even think Jesus was hiding it. He literally said, I am but a worm. But this word isn't just a worm, it's tolat. And the tolat shanim is what was used to produce the crimson that was used in the tabernacle. Oh shit, it's raining. Dang it. I'm going to collect a little bit more and I'm going to... I'll, I'll, I'll take the sign of my phone dying as a sign. So, here. Let's collect a little bit more. Um, let's see. Um, what? Why are you saying wait? What do I wait for? Yeah, you didn't know that? In fact, so th this is a good connection. So the reason why um, rain is so important in Judaism is because Canaan is one of the lands, like Arizona, that is completely dependent on rain. You don't have regular, um, you don't have regular showers and you don't have um, rivers to rely on. And so because of that, you are completely reliant on the weather, or in other words, on God. And so that's part of the reason why, I mean, given, you can understand this within a Canaanite context as, oh shit, let me get this. You can understand this in a Canaanite context. Uh, actually, I'm gonna hold on to it because otherwise I won't know when my phone dies. So y you can think of this in a Canaanite context, Baal. The rain is, and I mean, it's very graphic, but the rain so Judaism isn't going to be so crass as to say that, but, um, but basically God provides the fertility of the land and, you know, I mean, I'm basically being drizzled in God's seed right now, given it's not going to cause me to grow anything, but, you know, in a way, think about it like water is life it provides life so does seed like th there's definite connections there except the water in some ways is almost like a feminine seed or it's like it's it's what causes growth um and also you have the connections with water and wisdom and the connective wisdom and life as well as water and life in fact this might this would be interesting uh diagram to draw so you have um, water, wisdom, and life, and they're all connected. Water's connected to wisdom, and water's connected to life. Wisdom's connected to water, and wisdom's connected to life. And life is connected to wisdom, and life is connected to water. You, you can't have any without the others. I mean, even so far as like, look, oh shoot, how am I going to get this? Even a scrying pool. What is a scrying pool? You are using water in order to create a reflection. It is literally using water for spirituality. Um, then you have fire gazing, for instance, and that's using fire. And then you have listening to the wind or um, looking into the air, following the movement of the birds, the auspices, um, all that stuff. That is using the, um, the rains, or I don't know why I said rains, the wind and the, um, you know, the things that are from the sky and the air in order to determine things. And then with, oh shit. Dang it, I just dropped it. Um, then you have, oh, dang it, I got a little bit of leaves in there. Um, then you have, oh shit, hopefully I don't get myself all red. Um, okay, perfect. So then, then you have the earth, and how is the earth used? Um, well, arguably, you could look at the earth and how it responds to all the other things, because the earth is fertilized by the rains or the water from the air. The, the, um, the fire in the air, the sun, is what provides the warmth in order that it grows. 
So you have fire, you have water, and you have air, and then you even have just the air that provides the oxygen. It needs, or not oxygen, sorry, the carbon dioxide. So you need all those things in order to grow. So in, in that you have earth, or sorry, you have um, fire, or you have air, fire, and water creating earth or, or being used with earth to create life or the pre preconditions for life. So, sorry, I'm trying to get this in while still holding it. So you all can see. So this is actually kind of fun. I'm going to do more of these streams where I just kind of, you know, show you all some of the shit I do. I mean, honestly, I probably, I, I didn't even think about recording this until I was doing this. I actually have some more at home, but I figured I'm going to try collecting it or trying extracting it this way because it might be a bit easier. Just use the bottle and then I can, you know, use it to hold liquid. Um, and this definitely seems to work. I mean, I'm, I, I could use a plastic bag as well, and I probably will because I have the other one, but yeah. Oh shoot, there's a little bit of leaf in here. Eh, it's fine, not a big deal. Let's see, so let's go through the comments. Uh, okay, here. Um, let's see. Um, this is weird. I thought it was hot and dry all the time. No, no, not all the time. In the winter, it's nice. It's actually very similar weather to Israel. Uh, okay, we almost think of the manna as rain almost. Interesting. I mean, the, the dew is connected to the manna, but not, to, not directly. Uh, then, so you can make red dye with that substance and wine. I mean, theoretically, it's probably like what I was talking about, more of a magic trick than anything, but... Um, I mean, yeah, you can use this to dye foods. In fact, um, if you've ever had a strawberry frappuccino from Starbucks, you have eaten these bugs. I mean, not them, you've eaten their blood. So, you know, if you do consider them connected to Jesus, I, I remember there was this one pastor saying that, you know, there's K semen in Starbucks. It's what makes it taste so good. I mean, seriously, there, there's a pastor who said that. But no, if anything, it's the blood of Jesus that is in your Starbucks. So everyone who's going about saying that Starbucks is satanic, uh, you could argue they're holy. And I mean, I wouldn't make that argument because Starbucks is a fucking evil company. I mean, to be fair, most companies are. But the point is, is that uh, people would probably be like, they're co-opting our sweet Lord's blood. But no, I mean, I, I think it's interesting how you have this etiology or not etiology, but this like um, ethnobotanical connections between um, very important religious figures and motifs and things that are, well, in this case, they're literally connecting Jesus with um, that, that his it, 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 given. I'm not a Christian. I'm just explaining what the Christian understanding of this would be. So you need to kill these in order to get their blood. And their blood is how you restore or how you, you know, um, properly establish the temple because you can't have the temple or the tabernacle without the shanim. It's just, it's impossible. It's used in the uh, temple garments and it's used in the um, in the actual temple. So the garments of the priests and the garments of the temple, if that makes any sense. It's used for both. And so, I, I don't know, I just think that's fascinating because in the, I mean, I, who knows if, I mean, realistically, Jesus probably didn't say that. It's probably something that's attributed to him. Well, actually, he might have, because he might have just, yeah, it, it's a psalm. He, he, if, if he truly said it, he was quoting a psalm. So it's not like he came up with this genius connection. What, what is genius about this, or whoever wrote this into it, whether it was actually Jesus' words or not, whatever the case is, um, the genius of it is that you're essentially saying that his death is necessary in order to restore the temple, given it wasn't because if that were the case, then the temple would be rebuilt. But because of that, you actually have the Christian understanding that Jesus is the temple and it's necessary, but it also doesn't really make sense because Jesus is connected to the temple, but he can't be the temple itself because otherwise, why is he the red dye that is used in the actual temple um, garments? Interesting. Uh, oh shit, hold on, I have to get this thorn out spine it's interesting like and this, this is what i was talking about um here you have you know it's, it's so tiny like to us it looks menacing when it's in the actual cactus but what is it to them it's literally just a freaking tower it's their own little tower of babel so to speak
here, let's stick it in here, see if we can even 